recently former president and record setter for fastest graying of hair, Barack Obama, condemned quippy slogans like defund the police, claiming that it pushes people away from criminal justice reform and polarizes people. Now, this continues the trend of revisionist history from the most handsome king of the Democratic Party, which ignores the hundreds and thousands of people that are still marching on the streets against police brutality. It ignores the continued killing of innocent pe people of color going about their day, and it very much ignores the real meaning behind slogans like defund the police. Now, defunding the police would mean that more money gets allocated to community-driven law enforcement. That means that the armed gunmen with the badges only show up when there's a threat that needs an armed gunman. Calling someone with the arsenal befitting one of a Call of Duty game for a speeding ticket or the possibility of a counterfeit bill is literally overkill considering cops are killing people in those instances, especially if that person's skin tone is darker than translucent. The traffic stops should be done by people who know and understand that it's a speeding ticket and not a war zone like in Call of Duty and there are no bonus points allotted to killing civilians. I'm almost certain that you're not supposed to kill civilians in Call of Duty either. Now, community law enforcement would also mean that uh, the folks patrolling the streets live in the neighborhoods that they're patrolling, right? Most cops don't. It would also mean that when there is a clear mental health issue, instead of filming the next Die Hard movie, you have a mental health professional that is called in to help the person instead of trying to John McClane the situation. Instead of yippee ki -yay, motherfucker, it'll be let's address your trauma, motherfucker. Okay, maybe a, a, a trained mental health professional isn't going to say motherfucker all the time, but you get the point. You get the point. And defund the police means exactly that too. The police budgets in a lot of... The, uh, a lot of situations trump the education budget, social services, and definitely any kind of mental health services. Dropping the police budget and demilitarizing the police would mean better schools, thriving communities, and less brutality in the streets from the boys in blue. Now, Obama wants to call this a quippy slogan, but this isn't a very big idea, and the movement needed something to get people's attention. Right? And defund the police sounds a whole lot more attractive than eradicate a racist criminal justice system that was birthed out of slave patrols, evolved to attacking strikers and socialists, and now is indiscriminately killing innocent black and brown people all across the country. But then again, maybe Obama is just jealous that a movement came up with a better and more substantive slogan than fucking hope and change. Right? O Obama's slogan now rings as a hollow reminder that we can't trust those that want all that much power. Uh, really, the slogan should have been hope for change, but fundamentally nothing will change. See in four years. How's that for quippy? Now, Obama is just justifying and spearheading the new excuse for why Democrats lost seats in Congress. Democrats claim it's because of a bunch of bills that came out of the defund the police movement that made things too polarizing, and hence, that's why they lost their elections. But the reality is that these bills that called for the end of qualified immunity, which lets cops have no accountability for committing crimes like murdering civilians, decreased the transfer of military equipment to the police, and reallocating funds to necessary social programs— were left in limbo as hundreds and thousands of people marched on the streets. And these came, these came with statements from Democrat after Democrat that adamantly said they will not ever defund the police. And so, as they usually do, the Democrats called in the big guns, Barack Obama, to revise history and blame the lack of a power grab on the people. 
in his interview, he calls out that the people need to be more focused on committing less crime. And yes, we, we really do, guys. We, the, the people really need to stop committing these crimes. You know, crimes like holding a sandwich like Casey Goodson. You know, the crime of sleeping in one's own home like Breonna Taylor. And the crime of, uh, of sitting in a car like George Floyd, and the crime of walking down the street like Antoine Rose and Eric Carter, and the crime of being bipolar like Walter Wallace. Okay, all of these crimes need to stop. America has turned a blind eye to, to walking and sandwich eating and mental health and car-sitting criminal behavior for long enough. Okay, All of these are gateway crimes. Okay, sandwich eating could give you a more strength and stamina, and then you go rob a bank, right? Well, walking could lead to running and eventually murdering the elderly. Okay, car sitting, that can turn into carjacking in a matter of seconds. And mental illness, well, do I even need to say any more? Look, the Democrats lost because they didn't do anything about police brutality. They used the movement for photo ops and Twitter platitudes, but when it came down to doing their job and making laws to ensure that the public can feel safer with the criminal justice system, they failed. And Obama failed too. I mean, Mike Brown and Eric Garner's death happened under his administration, and those were the police killings that were televised. I mean, there were a tons more that didn't get any media attention at all. Now, this attack on the defund the police movement is also another way to bolster the new racist in chief. I mean, commander. I meant to, uh, commander in chief, Joe Biden. Now, Biden's record on criminal justice and contributing heavily to issue uh, to the issue of police brutality and racism in the criminal justice system is astonishing. And Obama's attack on the defund the police movement is a way to essentially delegitimize even bringing up Biden's record as the source of the problem. The issue of Joe Biden's attack on people of color began with his flip-flop on the on desegregating schools and busing, right? He claimed that forced busing was an economic concern, but you know, then then again so did the people that advocated keeping slavery intact, right? It was good for the economy that we keep a group of people that have a specific skin tone enslaved and treat them as lesser. It's what capitalism calls for. I mean, that's just code for, well, my racism is good and noble because, well, it keeps me rich, and if I'm rich, then America is rich. Now, well, he did point out how his home state of Delaware was proud to be a southern state during the Civil War, so I guess... His racist flip-flop on desegregation is just his heritage. Now, in 1977, Biden said that he did not want his kids to grow up in a racialized jungle. And they wouldn't have to be if you just introduced them to some black kids and helped them learn that the amount of melanin in one's skin has nothing to do with who they are as a person. The only person racializing the argument is Joe Biden by saying that race is a factor for who gets to go to school. Biden emboldened the police in the 80s by lobbying Reagan for tougher crime laws. Yeah, it turns out the old Gipper wasn't tough enough on crime. See, he worked with Strom Thurmond, an even bigger race, racist senator, to put out a bill that expanded penalties for marijuana, permitted punitive legal strategies, and approved civil asset forfeiture where cops are allowed to take your stuff. If Biden had continued to have his way, it wouldn't have ended penalties for the plant marijuana, but all plants, like broccoli, which he was forced to eat as a kid, and as much and much like his distaste for forced busing, he was also against forced vegetation. In the 90s, his greatest achievement to hand over more power 
uh, and exceptions to racism to the police came in the form of the Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act, politely known as the 94 Crime Bill. It has 60 new death penalties, 100,000 more cops, 125,000 more prison cells, and 70 enhanced penalties, plus a kung fu grip on communities of color who would be disproportionately thrown into prison. The crime bill had it all. If you were a sociopathic dictator trying to run a prison empire. Now, Joe Biden is responsible for the increased police violence when he created bills that makes made cops look at the civilian populace as the enemy. And for a warmonger like Joe Biden, having cops fight a war where the opposition has no idea they're in a war is perfect. Look, when Biden began running, Obama didn't even think he had a chance. He told one of the candidates this in Iowa. He's on record with Politico saying that don't underestimate Joe's ability to fuck things up. So why would the DNC pick a guy uh, as the main candidate? Partly because they needed to convert some Republicans over to the Democrats to beat Trump. Eh, nothing like a Dixiecrat, which is just code for Republican and Democrats clothing to get all those scared, rich suburbanites to vote for the big D. And then you bring out your big guns to vouch for the old racist coot. Both Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. warned the true left about the white, moderate, liberal. They both said that they would trick you into a false sense of security and implement racist authoritarian laws and policies, but do it with a trusting smile on their face. Right? Joe Biden is the biggest example of the white moderate liberal. I mean, he is the reason why we have to defund the police and why so many people of color are living in fear of those that are meant to protect and serve. And now we can add the neoliberal former black president to that list of people we need to watch out for as well. The Democratic Party is participating in revisionist history to cover the racist past and present. And they'll continue to blame mass movements like Black Lives Matter, the Defund the Police movement, and every labor movement that, has, that strikes a chord with the American people. They want to hold on to their power and much and, and, and these real fundamental changes, well, they mean that they lose all their power. Their hope lies in the lies preached by their most attractive mascot. But our hope, our hope lies in the truth and in each other. That has been your dispatch for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to this. Hey, if you uh, enjoy uh, this content and you would like to uh, help this show out, uh, you're, you're a fan of the show, you're a fan of the things that I do and you want to help out, uh, there's a couple different ways you can do that. If you are in a position where you can financially contribute to the show, you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com. You can make a one-time donation or you can make a, become a sustaining member and make monthly contributions to this show. Uh, but I know things are tight. I know we are in uh, in a difficult time right now. So financial contributions are not something that you can make. Uh, you can also share this stuff out. Sharing is a big way that you can help out a show like this. I have uh, usually a lot of my content gets censored, gets suppressed by uh, the larger tech companies like Facebook, like YouTube. Uh, so I depend on you guys sharing and getting the word out. Uh, and you can find all of all this stuff, including past episodes of the show, videos, my stand-up comedy albums, links to donate, ways to share, uh, right on my website, which is krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. Thank you guys so much. Uh, 